on the corner of South Finley and Deering Street. It continues to attract visitors to this day, with hundreds of Google reviews recommending a visit. To understand the origins of this sovereign tree, I began with a quick trip to become more familiar with the property. After this short journey across town, I turned to the Georgia archives and soon discovered the earliest recorded mention in the Athens Bannered Herald. It all begins with a professor, William Jackson, who taught at the university and is believed to have rented the home and property on that archaic cobblestone intersection in the mid-1800s. The legend goes that Jackson became fond of the tree and sought to intertwine his desire for a legacy with this arboreal monument. Before Jackson's passing, it is said that he specifically granted that piece of property to the tree itself, and with that, the deed was created. Yet, today, no evidence of this last will and testament, or any legal records indicating that Jackson actually owned the property to begin with, has been discovered. Professor of History Merton Coulter points out that no recorded mention of the tree appeared anywhere until the newspaper article from 1890 was published 15 years after Jackson's death. The most peculiar part of this story is that this original article has no signed author. Professor Merton believes that the entire legend could have originated as some sort of trick or challenge for the local law students of the time. Merton also pointed out that the original tree actually fell down during a thunderstorm in 1942, but the local junior ladies' garden club sprouted in of living history we all see today. Regardless of how legitimate the tree's claim actually is, in the social memory of Athens, the legend survives and ensures that although Mr. Jackson's name might not come up as often, it is impossible to talk about the tree that owns itself without invoking his memory.